Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Entropy Cast. A one take, no re recording, uh, no editing, uh, you know, podcast where it's either a monologue or me joined by a guest, and I just roll with whatever I've got coming off my head. Uh, to start it off this week, I have a PBR, Pabst Blue Ribbon, 12 fluid ounces. Um, I don't know the percentage of this beer, because I do not see it on the label. Uh, it is, my guess, 5.6%. I actually have no clue. Couldn't tell you. But, when I was picking up this beer today, because I got off work, came home, dropped some stuff off, like, you know, a toaster... <laughs> Which might seem a bit out of the ordinary, but I didn't have a toaster, so I brought the toaster home and left it, and then went to get the beer. Because, you know, you can't have a beer run with a toaster in the car. That's an arbitrary rule that is now going to be in effect uh, for the indefinite future. No to no beer runs with a toaster in the car. But, I went into the liquor store to, you know, grab my PBR, and... This guy walks in who looked like he was maybe 14, and for the first time ever, I've seen someone get carded before they even came to the register with anything. This guy came in, looked around for like a solid three minutes, you know? And uh, the guy working the register was like, hey, are you lost? Uh, I'm going to need to see your ID. And I, I struggled not to laugh, honestly. The are you lost was very funny to me but uh i walked around as always looking at everything in the um looking at everything in the area so that i can you know decide whether i want like a new type of beer because i haven't had a lot of beers i've had like a heineken a pbr and a couple other things and that's about it i've had a few liquors but not many beers uh, pbr though solid uh 12 of them for 12 bucks so about a dollar a little less than that, actually, because tax, so like $10. $10. Uh, PBR, though? Solid beer. Didn't know that when I stepped out of the car with the 12-pack in hand. Uh, took two steps, stepped on ice, and fucking slammed into the ground. That is the hardest I've fallen. And, of course, because uh, I'm an idiot, instead of getting straight up, the first thing I did... <laughs> the first thing I did was check to see if I smashed my beer... <laughs> Uh, not my phone that I dropped, or my glasses that flew off of my face when I fell to the ground. Yes, I did actually lose my glasses in the fall. It was that hard. It was an... I'm not gonna say an atrocity. That would be a bit... Uh, like, that would be a bit harshly worded. It was, um... A tragedy. <laughs> Let's say that. It's, it's, it was a tragedy. But it was, um... Nonetheless, a very, very hard fall. So I got inside, decided the first thing I would do would not be check my knee or check my left elbow because I slammed on my left side. I uh, instead uh, took off my uh, work shoes and I was like, all right, <laughs> time to take out the garbage. Um, genius plan, by the way. Uh, did not remember it was slippery somehow i i just forgot i guess but um walked back outside immediately <laughs> slipped again so in the last uh i've been home for like two hours now uh I, you know spontaneous recording that's how we do these it makes us a bit more chaotic and a bit more free form the genius in me was like all right Let's go straight outside, take the garbage out, hit the ground again. Uh, finished taking the garbage out, this time slid for a bit, but did not fall. And yes, I fell on my left side both times. Very proud of myself. Um, I, I don't think I could have intentionally done that if I had tried. But that like slip is the hardest I've fallen since... Uh, some guy grabbed my ankle and slammed me into the ground when I was playing middle school basketball. Like, 
that gave me a concussion. I did not get a concussion here. I only landed on the important parts of my body other than my head, such as um, my arm and my leg and my ribs. So at least it wasn't like my neck, you know, like it still hurt, but it could have been way worse. It could have been like 10 times harder than it actually was. Still hurts to fall in since then. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've been falling a lot. You can blame the ice. Like, I could absolutely be like, oh, it's because it's so slippery outside. Um, no, I, I'm just actually clumsy as hell recently, and I'm not sure why. I'll be, like, walking through the apartment, go to take a, go to take a turn, and slam into the wall. I'll go to leave my bedroom and catch my, like, right arm on the door handle. That never feels well. Well, never feels good. Like, if you walk out of your room and catch just, like, your wrist on the thing and slam into it, it hurts. That's pain. It's almost as bad as, like, smacking your knee on the sharp edge of a table. Because it's your, it's your, like, it's your wrist, man. That thing is kind of important to your body and feels a lot of pain. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, I've done that recently. I've gotten the... Uh, so I wear a lot of hoodies. I've gotten the... You know the inner pocket? The one that goes all the way through on, like, right below your stomach where you would expect a normal pocket to be, I guess. Uh, you know, it's just like a... It's at the part where a pocket would be on a hoodie. Yeah. I, I can't explain that any better than I have there, in case you haven't seen a hoodie before. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it was like, cut that on the corner of a door handle. Luckily, not one of the ones that act as a hook and yank you backwards like a fish. But just a rounded one. But the problem with catching it on a rounded one is that it's a lot more startling. You can kind of feel the hook one start to happen. But with a rounded one, it's just instantaneously stopping you. So I walked out, grabbed that, got spun around like I was in a... Like, as if I was, like, a, a a dancing top or a Beyblade, I guess, would be a better description. And whipped around and smacked, because I was startled. My hand got whipped around with me, and I smacked that into uh, the other door that's nearby. That didn't feel good. I, I've just kind of been, like, the universe's tumbling toy. Like, uh, what, oh, what were the, were they Weeble Wobbles and they don't fall down? I'm a weeble wobble, but I fall down every time I'm touched. I'm, I'm dying. But like weeble wobbles, man, those things had some incredible like toy sets. Admittedly, it was just a weighted like toy with a rounded bottom. Um, but they had these like it. So to describe it. It looks as if you're looking at a town dollhouse, but there's no dollhouse behind it. And there's like these little spinny things on the ground in front where you could set them. And because, you know, they weeble and they wobble and they don't fall down, uh, you could kind of just like push them around the thing and like rapidly spin it and they would not fall. They would eventually whip off of it at you because you spun it incredibly fast. Uh, much faster than they expected the user base to do. Like, they expected, like, four-year-olds to play with this, or three-year-olds. And when you are a uh, middle schooler playing with this and whip it around, it gets more speed than they thought and will absolutely come flying off and smack you in, like, the chest. But, I mean, there have been worse injuries. <laughs> Just, you know, a little bit of friendly smacking in the chest. What are you going to do? A little bit of friendly toy play that ends up in uh, a minor bruise. Well, a, a major bruise. It came off very quickly. Uh, it, it hit me really hard. But, like, it's still not as bad as I think I, like, I, the, the tattoo baseball, the one that hit me in the cheek, the one that my coach threw when I wasn't paying attention and smacked me in the cheek, that one. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. That bruise lasted like a few weeks. It lasted long enough for me to get a nickname. So, you know. 
It was bad. I never had much luck in baseball. I don't know. It wasn't my sport. Most sports were not my sport. I did. I vaguely remember talking about this, actually. I I don't actually know if I have. I don't remember last podcast. That's kind of the point, is that it's chaotic and I don't remember it. But, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, like... I think I definitely, I, okay, I definitely talked about this. I remember the story now. Okay, we're, we're, we got it. We're, we're moving on. I've definitely, hmm, let me see. Did I, have I ever tried, oh, right, I was supposed to try water polo at some point. That was a middle school thing. It didn't end up happening. I still don't know what water polo is, honestly. Whenever I think water polo, I think, like, I don't know what hor- I don't know what polo is. I don't understand how cricket works. I don't know what polo is. I I understand tennis um somewhat. I don't know how the scoring system works. It's 153040 and then 50, right? I don't know why they swap from 15 to 30. That's plus 15 each time and then it goes to 40. Uh I don't understand that. I also don't understand why it's, like, I understand that 40 love means that they're both at love. No, deuce is, what is 40 love? I know deuce, deuce means that they both hit it. Or is it you have to win by two? Is that how tennis works? So you get to 40 and then you have to win by two points? Why wouldn't they just do it like, you have to hit, it's a, I don't, I don't understand tennis, man. I don't get it. A much easier way would be first to five win by two. If you hit four and someone else hits four, you both get sent back to three. I don't know why you would be like, ah, yes, 15, 30, 40, 50. But if they both hit 40 at the same time, they both get set back. I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, That's tennis to the best of my understanding. You can't hit the net with the ball, but if you hit the net with the ball and it goes over onto their side, it still counts, right? Or is that ping pong? I think that might be ping pong. I don't know. I've never actually played ping pong. I've played ping pong three times ever? No, wait. Four. Four times ever. And uh I I we there's no we didn't keep track of the score. I don't know how ping pong works. Much like tennis, apparently. Uh I still don't know what water polo is. Whenever I think water polo, I think the the polo shirts. But I do not believe the sport involves wearing polo shirts in the water. I believe that they probably wear swimwear. And I don't know how you tell your team apart. Maybe an armband would be my guess. I actually don't know. Or a cap. Do they have to wear hats? Do they have to wear those swimmer hats and goggles? Can you opt not to wear the goggles? Can you opt not to wear the hat? I want to opt not to wear that. Can I start playing water polo and start... A movement to get banned the hats, if there are hats? I don't actually know. This is all entirely speculation at this point. I don't understand water polo. Um, How do you even score? Is it like soccer? Is it like... Is it like wet lacrosse? Hmm. Thinking about it. I think I've definitely seen water polo be played at some point somehow. I don't actually remember it. But I vaguely recall now that it's like wet lacrosse, which uh, I, I don't understand. Oh, w- oh, you know what? Actually, I remember what I thought water polo was now. I, you know how in normal polo you ride a horse, I think? Or is that horse polo? Is there a difference between normal polo and horse polo? I think you ride a horse. I believe that in water polo, I have always believed you ride on someone's back to score points somehow. I don't know how. The game doesn't make sense to me. I, I need someone, someone in the comments, please explain to me how the game of polo works and water polo, because water polo is the one I really care about. I want to understand how you score points without a horse, because I'm pretty sure you have to use a horse in polo. Like, there's no, it, like, you can't just get off the horse and sprint. You'd be outrun by the other horses. I still don't actually know if there are horses in polo. I, <laughs> I, I got no clue. Literally couldn't tell you. Like, I, that, it's a sport. 
that has not and will not ever make sense to me. But uh, enough about the polo talk. Let's talk about polos, the shirt. You know those shirts? You know, if you don't know what a polo is somehow, um, it's, as far as I know, a shirt with a collar like the one you would the one you would picture like kids wearing to public school i don't know what colors your school might have worn but it's like the i don't it's not tweed it's like uh it's like threaded in a way that's extremely uncomfortable for everyone but they require you to wear it so they'd wear it and have their collars and the collar had to be flipped down that's a polo there's this shirt all right shirt or shirts that i want i want like 10 or 12 different colored polos so i can layer them like people did in the i think it was like 2000 early 2000 i really want to wear it i think that it would look fantastic wear some like khaki shorts in like five or six different polos of random colors it would look incredible and i think that there is no better way to just Say you're going out to a bar, or you're just going out to, like, the mall or something to do something. I don't know. Whatever you do in your daily time, I, I don't do anything. I work and come home. Uh, say you go out, and you show up wearing six different polos of various colors, <laughs> and they're all stacked. The collars are flipped up so that they look stacked as if it's all one shirt, but it just looks goofy because it's all a different color. I think that that would be... An incredible outfit with whatever pants you choose to wear. I am more partial to, like, khaki cargo shorts. Whatever. White cargo? How do you... What is the... Vert, is it khaki? Khaki's like a brown, right? But I thought khakis were a pants. Is it... I don't... Like a, the, the, an, a, like a, a slightly brownish white cargo pants. Cargo shorts, not pants. Shorts. The shorts make it work. The pants would look weird. Cargo pants do not look good. Cargo shorts do. Just like uh, the opposite of jeans. Like, normal jeans look good. Normal jean shorts do not. Like, you can maybe run... Capris! That's the name of the shorts. Uh, yeah, capris. Capris would look good, I think. I think that's what they're called. Or is it... Chinos. Chinos. That's what they're called. <laughs> I think chinos would look fantastic i don't care what color but they would look well those are the pants chino short you know what i'm saying you get it you understand i'm sure it uh it would look pretty good so you show up with that and like an ascot maybe get an ascot for each individual um <laughs> polo shirt <laughs> wear that underneath each one so that say you're like i don't know playing ping pong we'll go back to that so you're playing ping pong you can rip one off and then still have another one with an ascot. And it would be like, it would be like uh, those scenes and shows where the person's mask comes off and there's just another mask. It would be beautiful. And it would be the funniest shit ever. I need to do that. That's my next big plan. I'm going to buy too many ascots and too many pairs or um, uh, polo shirts. And I'm just going to send it. Because it will be extremely funny when I do. And if no one else is laughing, I am. Which is all you can get sometimes, you know? Sometimes you only have to entertain yourself. And that's good enough. So long as you aren't uh, impeding on others' entertainment. And you're just uh, having a good time. That's, that's life, man. Be funny to you. And if other people find it funny as well, good. Well, I, I, like it, I don't get it. Just be, have fun, you know? Wear the, too many pairs of, uh, pairs? Too many, uh, polo shirts at once. I don't know. I need to, in a similar vein, I need more scarves. I need to wear, like, a scarf per day of a different type. So that when I show up somewhere, people are like, hey, the scarf guy. I want, like, a scarf of every type. If you are in the comments and you have recommendations for a scarf let me know i got scarf plans i want to be able to have enough scarves to tie them together and form a rope i don't know why i can't take this rope anywhere i don't have anywhere to go with it but the ability to have a scarf rope would be incredibly entertaining to me i would just be overjoyed 
it was <laughs> I don't like do it like a one of the ones in the movies with the bed sheets but with scarves full on Rapunzel down it would be beautiful just a, a scarf of it you know could I play jump rope with scarves if I had enough I mean surely I don't even know why I asked that question of course you could but would I I think I might I think I might jump rope with some scarves to do that at some point. Get them all different. Oh, I could perform like the magician's trick with scarves. The one where they pull, uh, oh, that would be a lot of scarves. That would be, that would take up a lot of space. Because I'm pretty sure the way they do that with bandanas, whatever they're actually, handkerchiefs, there we go, not bandanas. The way they do that is they just have a lot of them bunched up in their shirt. I'm pretty, well, a coat more so. In a pocket, I'm pretty sure. Uh, would not work with scarves. Uh, too bulky. But it would be pretty funny if I walk up extremely bulky and I'm like, would you like a scarf? <laughs> they pull it out. And it just keeps rolling for like a solid two or three minutes. Funniest shit in the world. I would die. I would fucking lose it as they constantly pull them out. But that would kind of give you like a rug burn on your arm, wouldn't it? Because... Some scarves are made out of, like, that, uh, that thread. What is the thread called? No, not cotton, not wool. Um, you know the one. The one that people knit with. That's cotton. It's absolutely cotton, isn't it? When I picture cotton, I picture soft, not, like, rough and bruisey. But it is, it, uh, it, it, it is cotton. Um, the thing that people knit with, which is cotton, I know, uh, <laughs> If you were to do the um, a scarf trick with that, you'd end up with, like, rug burn around your entire body. That would be a nightmare. Yarn! There we go. Not cotton. <laughs> Absolutely not cotton. What is what is yarn? I'm going to look it up, and it's going to be cotton. So I refuse to look it up now. I'm never going to know. If I look it up and it says cotton, I'm going to lose my mind, because I was technically correct that entire time. That would be incredibly incredibly disappointing but um i'm sitting here and i'm thinking about cotton and yarn right how do you get yarn isn't yarn like uh what's it called threaded together rapidly rapidly repeatedly it's a plant shocking i know um whenever i picture yarn i picture like hay being threaded together ra uh, repeatedly and i know i'm wrong but I don't know the correct answer, and I'm just going to stick with the idea that it's hay, because it's infinitely more entertaining than if it were like, uh, I don't know, I was going to say dandelions. <laughs> like if it were, actually, can I make a scarf of dandelions? People make crowns out of them. Like those little flower uh, crowns. I might attempt it. I might attempt to make a scarf from dandelion stems. I, it, like, it's going to take time. I got to wait for them to regrow and stuff like that. But it would be fun. And it would be a great waste of time. But it would also be um, useless. Because I would literally never wear a scarf of dandelions. It would be one of the most uncomfortable things I could imagine. And uh, it's not worth it. It, it's not, it, the entertainment is not worth the discomfort in this situation. Most of the time it is, but not, not this time. Not at all. Not one bit. I actively will refuse to do that. It's, um, nonetheless would be pretty entertaining. Or is there a soft plant? Don't, don't say cotton. <laughs> don't, don't say cotton. Is there like a soft plant stem? One where you can actually make a scarf out of it. Because if so, I might buy a ton of that plant and thread it together by myself. Like hand thread um, them all over each other. Because I think that it would look incredible for the one day it lasted before they all wilted. And I could wear that to like a big event. I don't know. The Super Bowl. I wouldn't go to the Super Bowl, I don't think. But you know what I'm saying. I think that would be incredible. And then the plants would die. And I would feel stupid because it would be solid brown, just like my other scarves. 
But in the meantime, it would be awesome. Maybe I could do it in like different colors. A plant scarf. I love the idea. I'm going to run with it. All I need now is plants. <laughs> I've got the idea, not the materials. And uh, I, I don't know how to get the materials. I don't even know anything about the materials. I think, I'm, uh, I think I might have screwed myself over here by coming up with such a good idea and the inability to create it. Because, shockingly enough, in order to make this uh, incredible idea happen, I would have to know how to braid, which I, I vaguely know. I could braid my own hair. It wouldn't look good, uh, but it could be done. But that means that I'm going to have to learn how to braid uh, plants in the meantime, which means I'm going to be making a lot of flower crowns come this spring. If anyone needs a flower crown, let me know. I'll be making them. Uh, I'm selling them for uh, one podcast view. You <laughs> tell all your friends they can get a free flower crown if they listen to this podcast. It's uh, it's gonna be a rough spring. It's a lot of it's a lot of braiding. Even if I'm just making one, it's like an hour of effort for me. I think I got big hands and not in small brain. It's gonna be rough to remember that I put the right one over the left one over the center one. Which would then be the left one. But you know what I mean. You get it. Braiding can't be done. Not by me. I'll learn though. I'll learn it for the bit. And then, when I learn how to braid that, then I can go into, like, professional braiding. I can braid, like, chains together. That would just... It would turn into a ball, wouldn't it? If you braided a chain. Would that be a weapon? Would a chain... I mean, a chain ball. Do that... Do Can you get a chain ball? It's just... Cha it's just metal, right? It's just like a, a wrecking ball, but a lot less effective. Actually, would it be... No, it would definitely be lighter. I was going to say, would it be heavier than a wrecking ball? Because chains are heavy. But then I remembered that wrecking balls are solid metal. And chains are not. They have holes in between the links. Not something you realize uh, when you go to ask a question as dumb as that. But, you know. Uh, what, what, what can you do? I bet it would do more damage, though. I would bet that a chain wrecking ball would do more damage than a normal wrecking ball because of the gaps, it would shred it more than it would just like instantly crush it. So that might be worth it. It's a lot more production uh, difficulty and effort, but it might end up being incredibly valuable and incredibly worth it. I don't know why you would want the thing you're using a wrecking ball on to be shredded, but if you are, you could just make like a giant cheese grater, not a chain wrecking ball. But now I want to see a chain wrecking ball. It just, uh, it kind of interests me, you know, a chain wrecking ball. I don't know why. Probably like whenever I think chain wrecking ball, I keep picturing a chain fence, like a chain link fence. Wait, a chain link fence. No, what are they called? They're just called fences, aren't they? I don't know. Is there a chain link fence? Probably not. Whenever, uh, th uh, that makes me think of chain mail, and I'm picturing a chain mail fence. And I know for a fact, actually, I'm not going to say I know for a fact. I know for a fact it's never been a popular thing. I don't know if it exists. Literally couldn't tell you if a chain mail fence is real. But nonetheless, I now want a chain mail uh, fence because it would be useless and just extremely heavy. And probably break whatever is holding it up. But it would be pretty funny. It would be incredibly funny for the first little bit that it's up. But, oh, wait a minute. That would be like the least effective fence ever. That would be so easy to climb. You could just put your holes in the chain. Your holes? You could put your holes in the chain links? You could put your fingers in the chain, li uh, chain links and just climb it, couldn't you? Like those normal fences. The ones with the uh, thin metal wire that is kind of like looped around each other slightly. You know, the normal fence, the one that looks like a diamond holes on it, just the typical fence, which I wonder if that has a name. I wonder if that process of doing that has a name. And if it's braiding, I'm mad because that means that machines are already better than braiding at me, that are already better at braiding than I am. And I know that machines are better at everything than I am, but braiding, I'm going to beat a machine in a braiding competition. That's 
a new goal for me. That is, it's going to happen. It'll take a little effort. A little effort. It's going to take a lot of effort. I have to get incredibly good at braiding. But I never said the machine would be a good machine. So I could go and beat a machine right now. I could beat a washing machine at braiding. What are they going to do? Wash it into a circle? Not going to happen. I literally just, I am already better at braiding than most machines are. That's incredible. That's a claim that anybody can make. I'm better at most things than most machines are. You know, that's a booster. That's a confidence booster today. I am better at most things than most machines are. I can toast better than a blender can. Not a toaster, because that's its one specialized purpose. So I will absolutely get my ass beaten by a toaster in a toasting competition. But you put me up against, like, a dryer? Actually, a dryer would... Uh, can you make toast in a dryer? I'm going to find this out. I am absolutely going to test this. Can you make toast in a dryer? It's got to be possible. Like, it gets hot. How hot do dryers get? This, uh, you know what? We're going to the internet for this one. How, how hot do dryers get? Around 125 to uh, 135 degrees. How hot does a toaster get okay no you cannot make you cannot it is not possible um i've just found out the temperature needed for the hot ambient air in a toaster which makes the bread turn brown is around 310 degrees that is twice as hot as a dryer you cannot make toast in a dryer but you can dry your clothes in a toaster information that is not useful but uh might still possibly be put into put into put to test I might attempt, it It will be a bad idea, but I might attempt to make toast in my dryer. Um, <laughs> it, it, I might, you know. I don't know why, but now I really want to. It, it seems like an experiment. What, can I cook something in my dryer? What can, What gets cooked around, like, I could probably make, like, a microwave burrito in a dryer? Surely. Like, it's just, it's just 150 degrees? Maybe a kit, maybe like one of those uh, pre-cooked, can you, I mean, you can heat stuff in a toaster, or a toaster, I mean a dryer. So if I were to take like a Tupperware container of already cooked food and put it in the dryer for the full dry cycle, it'll come out warm enough to eat, I think. Um, probably not ready to eat because I have a feeling it will break apart and make an extreme mess. But I think that it's going to be put into action. If it makes a mess, I'll deal with it. But it's going to be tested. It's got to be tested. I just feel like I'm going to regret that statement down the line. I'm going to go to, like, make ravioli in my uh, dryer. And it's going to be a very bad idea. Actually, ravioli are just, like, pockets, right? They'd probably dry normally. Dry normally? They probably cook normally in a dryer. Because all they are is, you know, pockets of food. Which means that I could do an incredible job of cooking within a, uh, a dryer. Maybe not a washer. Actually, if something needs water added, I might be able to do it in a washer. If it's just like a small food, throw it in the washer. Easy. Move on. We're free. So simple. And uh, that... It seems like I've got a lot of experimenting to do this time. Last time I didn't have many plans. This time I've got extreme plans. I'm gonna make toast. I'm gonna make... Well, toast in a dryer. I'm gonna attempt to cook something that has water in the washer. And that's gonna be my biggest mistake. Oh, wait! I could use a dryer to, like... Um, mix my drinks, couldn't I? Because it, you know, spins it around. It's like a, it's like a very low effort tumbler. Not the website, but like the drink thing. It just seems like an incredible idea to me. And one of the easiest possible things I could do that would cost way more money if it fails than if it didn't. But I think that that will be extremely funny. And if non nonetheless, make, uh, make a good story. The time I attempted to make a drink in my dryer. 
not me being in the dryer, but the drink being in the dryer with the dryer turned on. I'm sure that came across normally, but I also have to, I got to specify because actually wait, if could, can I turn on a dryer and leave it open and like have just my bottom half in it? If it's a standing dryer, probably right. And just like get spun around rapidly things that I, all right. So I need to buy a, a standing dryer, a standing dryer, a dryer with the top up as opposed to a dryer with the top to the side top to, I mean, you know, the door. The door is the top to me. I feel like that would be my uh, best possible course of action and would result in the best possible outcome of not getting thrown out of a dryer with the door open. Uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to test it. It's going to happen. I don't know if the toast will work. The toast will most likely not work. I will just get hot bread. Or the bread will end up being ripped apart and I will have to completely clean the entirety of the dryer and I'll feel stupid, but it's worth the effort and worth the risk for the least efficient uh, toast I will have ever made. But also making some incredible uh, food in the washer is, uh, are washers, I mean, you can make them hot. Can you boil water in a washer? Probably not. Can you boil water in a dryer? Also, probably not. Now that I'm thinking about it. I just I just remembered how hot dryers get. Most likely not. Hmm. I mean, water evaporates at a certain... At, oh, you know what? Actually, maybe. It might be possible to boil water in a dryer. I think it's worth the attempt. If nothing else, then to just be... Uh, dumb. But with all the dryer talk and washer talk, I think that I have to go and test these series. Uh, probably right now. Maybe not right now. Maybe tomorrow or over the weekend. Because this is always recorded between the last episode and the next one. We don't do future recordings. This one is being recorded on a Monday. Uh, the Monday before it goes up, by the way. And I gotta go test this. So... That being said, uh, thank you so much for listening. I know this one was shorter than expected, uh, 37-ish, 38-ish, but uh, it was last minute because I'm an idiot and forgot about the podcast. So that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for listening. Well, that being said, good morning, good evening, and good night, depending on when you are listening. Thanks again. Have a good one.